All right, this is fire ground hydraulics, the hand method. The hand method is the bread and butter for most of our lines that we use on your typical room and content structure fires. It is based off of flows. Now, if you haven't watched my first video on the second principle of friction loss, you need to watch that first, and then this will be, make more sense as we go along. If you have watched that or if you just want a refresher on the hand method, let's get down to it. Now, each finger on your hand is going to be assigned a value for a flow starting at 100 or 95 and working its way up in increments of 25 gallons per minute. So, like I said, 100 at the base, 125, 150, 175, and then 200 at the end. Now, on top of that, each finger is going to be assigned a multiplier, starting off with the first finger of your thumb, and it's super hard to remember, sarcasm heavily implied, is one, two, three, four, and five. Now the last piece of this puzzle that we need is whatever hose you're working with, you need that coefficient. And you're gonna have to figure out two numbers for that coefficient. First is the actual coefficient for that first line. So we're gonna call this six for like a 6.5 coefficient, 1.88. The rest of the fingers are going to get a value somewhere between 75 and 80 percent of that coefficient. So we're going to call it five across the board to make it easy, simplify it a little bit, and less things to have to remember on top of everything else you have to remember. So let's put it into practice. If I have a fire engine with a 100 foot line of 150 GPM at 100 PSI. How do I figure this out? Well, I know I need 100 so I can pull that lever and start giving them a hover. And now I got a couple seconds to kind of figure out what do I need to juice them up to. So I'm going to remember 1, 125, 150 is my third finger. 3 times 5 is 15 psi per 100 foot. Like I said, per 100 foot is the key to this. If I have a different line that is 200 feet long, 175 GPM at 75 PSI, what am I gonna do? Start right at the beginning. One, 125, 150, 175 is the fourth finger times five is 20 per 100. So 75, 95, 115 is what this guy is gonna get pumped at. And it's that simple, you just break it down Work back to the engine, start at the nozzle, give him that nozzle pressure he needs because that's where you can make the most headway on a fire. Now, a lot of departments, ours included, have selectable gallons nozzles that'll bump all the way up to 250 gallons per minute. Say you want to use that 250. You don't have 250 on your hand with this hand method. But by incorporating that second principle that we talked about earlier, I have half of that. So if I make that line 250 at 100 PSI, I'm going to go to my half value of that, which is 125. So 1, 125. 2 times 5 is 10. Now I need to quadruple that value because I'm doubling my flow. So this, instead of being 10, is going to be 40 per 100. That guy is going to get pumped at 140. Next step on that is working in the reverse. So let's say I have a grass fire way off in the field and I want this thing to be 300 foot long at 60 gallons per minute at 100 PSI. Same problem with that 250 is that I don't have 60 on my hand, but I have a number that's close to double that. 125. It's a little high, but it's pretty close. So we're going to go off of that guy. So I'm going to do the same method, start with the basics and work my way to it. 1, 125. 2 times 5 is 10. Correct? So since I'm halving my flow, I need one quarter my friction loss from that. So that's going to be a friction loss of 2.5 per 100 foot. 2.5, 2.5, my, my mistake there, 
and 2.5. So this guy's gonna get pumped at 107 and a half. I know what you're saying, bump it to 110. I'm not a fan of that. What I like to call it is dancing the needle. So if I have my gauge and I have 110 and I have 105, anyone who's ever been on a pump panel knows that needle doesn't go there and stay dead there. It vibrates, it moves, it bounces back and forth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna bounce it right in between. So that's gonna get me as accurate as possible because we're professionals that we, be, we can be super accurate on these things. And secondly, if you decide to just say it's 107 and a half, I'm gonna give them 110. They get up to 110, they start bumping it up, up higher, and up higher. And that's not that big of a deal. It's something like 60 gallons per minute, but create good habits instead of bad habits because it's gonna make a difference if TV's at 175, 200, or 250. So that's how you can figure that out. Practice, practice, practice. Reps make you strong, so make lots of reps. Sit around. After a while, you can be fighting back and forth to who can figure it out quicker around the firehouse table. Um, the last thing is if you have smooth bores that don't have these standard 25 increment values. So let's say you have a smooth bore nozzle. And let's say it's got a value of uh, 185 at 50. I don't have 185, but I have 175 and 200. So what I typically like to do is I'm gonna go up to the number that's right below it and close. 175, I'm gonna figure that out. Three and fourth finger, four times five is 20 per 100 foot. Let's say this line is 200 foot long, standard cross lay. 20 and 20. That's going to give me 90, but I know I need a little more. My next value up is going to be 25, but that's too high. So I'm going to split that difference between those fingers. Probably call it 22. So I got 95 and 90. I'm going to get it to ride up to there and I'm going to dance it right up to about 94, 95 in that range. Make sure I don't go too high or too low. Like I said, we can be super accurate because we're professionals. And that's it. Like I said, it takes lots of practice. Um, but I did mention I would talk about why those values need to be less. This is basically a shortcut of figuring out the actual friction loss, coefficient, quantity squared, and length. So since we're figuring it out 100 feet at a time, we're just knocking the length off of there and we're doing coefficient times quantity squared. So there's our coefficient, we got that covered. But our quantity squared is based on these values. Now if you actually squared 125, it's like 1.56 and then you got 2.25 and 3.06 and then four. So those would be, you would see how you would be higher if you just use that coefficient across, but you don't want to have to remember 1.56, 2.25. It's easy to just remember these solid numbers, but to make it more accurate, knock those numbers down anywhere from 75 to 80% of the value of your coefficient. So say if you have a coefficient of 10.5, I would call it 10 and eights across the board. And that's how you can incorporate it to pretty much any hose line and be more accurate than it used to be in the old book where they gave you the coefficient for all of them. Because like I said, we're professionals, we can be better, we can do better, so let's be better. Reps make you strong, go make those reps. Thanks for watching.